Hey guys, this is Bongo, and this is Bruno, and this is a view from a valley. So today I'm going to be teaching you um, how we did it to get our kind, how, how we did our training for Bongo to be a service dog. Of course, not a real service dog because she didn't go to any government office to do the paperwork. We just did it at home, and we did it just so that we would be able to t get their airplanes and go to some fancy hotels. And I didn't bring the leash today, so we're just gonna show you for a couple of minutes the off-leash training. And first of all, we should say that not any dog can be a service dog. They have to be somehow obedient and calm. They have, a, have to have a non-aggressive temperament. So that's the probably the main re requirement. And it helps if it's some kind of shepherd, like like Bongo could look could pass as a Belgian. Or, or yeah, Belgian Shepherd. But if it's small or big, doesn't matter. So we got the certificate online, on in China because of course we couldn't go to the government office in China to do, and also this doesn't just doesn't exist in China. But we made sure we were very well prepared for our trip to get on flights, get on planes, and. I didn't bring the leash today, so I cannot show you the on-leash training. But whatever she can do off-leash, she can do on-leash. So I just never bother with the with the leash because as long as she's good without without leash, then she'll be good on a leash. So mostly ah, so if you're if you have <coughs> eye problems like me, or if you're visually disabled, you have to make sure that the dog has to get used to going on your left. Always well now she 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 knows she's free. She can go anywhere. But if you're on the street, you have to go on your left because your cane has to go on your right hand. And then if you are going to the airport, mostly what she would need to do is just stay next to you. Make sure that she doesn't run away. She doesn't get distracted. I have a few a few cookies just to show you some basic stuff. Very basic stuff. Bongo. So what's important is heel. So I, I just say sit. Sit. And I have three ways of doing this. The first one is just saying sit. Second one is doing like this with my hand, so she knows she has to do like this. And the third one is tapping the side of my trousers like this. And then she knows she has to sit next to me. And this is very useful for when, for every, yeah, we use it all the time. If you are checking in for the flight, if you are just waiting for food and the restaurant, just heal and then, uh, people use heal, I just say sit. And the next most important thing is tell her to wait because sometimes you just have to go to the toilet. I mean, well, I take her to the toilet, but you can maybe you need to go somewhere where she needs to stay. So I said, Bongu, wait. And then I go where I need to go. Go for a walk. And then we call her, come. Ah, Bongu. Good girl. Wait. I didn't give her the cookie just yet. So I just make her wait. Bongu, wait. Bongu, come. Good girl. So it doesn't matter how far I go. She has to stay with strangers or stay with where she has to stay. Bongu, sit. Bongu, wait. Bongo, come. Good girl. So she learned this when she was a puppy and it's been eight years now. She's, she will be eight next, yeah, seven and a half years now. So she didn't forget anything. As long as she can just, I will show you now how I tap my, and she knows this. Bongo, good girl, wait. So she knows that and then she knows she has to wait. Now we'll show you how she can, she, even though she cannot see very well, she can still see my hand. Bongo, come. Now I will do it just with my hand. Bongo. Good girl. 
One go. Good girl. Another important thing I forgot is tell her to lay down. Bongo, lay down. Good girl. Good bongo. Wait. Bongo, wait. Eh. Uh, okay. Well, she's still waiting. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so sometimes she. Yeah, it's been many years we didn't do this, but I, I don't really need her to lay down now because we're just at home or going to the mountain. And yeah, it just looks nice that she can relax, to tell her to relax and tell her when she can lay down. She, she doesn't need to be sitting, but many times she will just lay down by herself anyway. But maybe if you are with some government officials or, or something, maybe it's just it's nice to show them that you have more commands at your disposal in case something happens and I will take you for a little hike now see you, you see you already know my face you don't need to see me and usually what we did was in China in the city of Anning which is like half an hour or one hour away from Kunming what we did for the training I would take her to all the shopping malls supermarkets I would try, well, I will try to explain with my broken Chinese and show some papers in the shopping mall and supermarkets to tell them that I was doing some kind of training. And well, we didn't have a metro subway or any a tube in that city, but we went still to the bus station. We went to many markets and public places, which was what we had been doing anyway since we were very young. And then there's another small training I did for when we travel by motorbike just to call her to sit between my legs and that took like five minutes she learned that very quickly and that's it we i think we never had any problems so nobody actually questioned her the fact that she was a, a guide dog everybody believed her and she never got into any trouble and we never got any, into any trouble and I'm not completely blind yet, but she does help me a lot as a guide dog when in the evening time because I have degenerative disease called retinitis pigmentosa and I cannot see anything after 6 p.m. or when it's dark. So if there's an emergency, a couple of times it happened that I had to put her on a leash and she would guide me somehow because she cannot be, see very well, but she would get me through where I needed to go. So she's a very good girl and that's it thank you for watching hope this was helpful